This is going to be the first study in the USA that has actually brought in two people to interact sexually while we're recording it for science. The last time science really paid attention to another partner that was in the room might have been Masters and Johnson's work, so that's like 1950s and 60s. But as far as I know, this is really the first time that it's been through an institutional review board and that we have two people who are interacting in the laboratory. We're measuring both of them, and that of course is huge. Being able to engage with emotion these days is huge. In fact, the people with trauma histories had higher arousal during OM than other people. Connecting with folks in the OM community who have stories to tell about very long lasting trauma symptoms that they tried many approaches with very little results and then getting dramatic effects from home. I was like, wow, this is about health. This is about, you know, all the ways I couldn't get helped. OM is like mindfulness on steroids. By taking a scientific approach, even a social scientific approach to OM, can help them see whether people like them have benefited from trying this practice. So that helps lower a barrier to trying something for themselves. And what we saw was people post-orgasmic meditation report an increase in positive emotions, a decrease in negative emotions. Right now we are just launching a new study looking at the OM meditation practice to be able to observe changes in the brain and in the body. We're seeing that the frontal lobes appear to be much more active, which is something that we have seen in other kinds of meditation practices, but the amount of activation certainly seems to be pretty substantial. This is today. Today. So again, I mean, the whole frontal yeah. lobe is really yeah, becoming way more. very active. Even the middle part is way more. Yeah. Look at that, like yep. right there. Yes, and, the and that, so that's your posterior cingulate. So we got some really interesting data back. If one does this kind of practice, it, it literally is changing the brain over the long term, which can really you know, argue for its longer term therapeutic effects. What can this do from a health perspective to improve depression, to you know, improve uh, treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder? We already have some evidence from these data is likely to work and something that's important as a mechanism that may underlie a number of different disorders that people care about.